The next part we're going to go into is vision. Realizing your vision and why your vision is important. Back in the day in the late 60s, before there was 300 channels on TV and the internet, it wasn't unusual for a young guy or a young gal to go out in the backyard with a ball or bat and pretend. And pretend that they were a Philadelphia Philly or a Philadelphia Eagle. I did it many, many times. And pretending was another way of dreaming back then. And uh, even though those dreams may have been lofty at the time, I, I had dreamed that I was going to be in a Philadelphia Eagles or Philadelphia Phillies uniform. If you want to be the best team standing at the end of the season and you want to be number one, you can't play the best. You have to be the best. And that, that starts up here. And you've got to believe that even though you haven't played a single inning yet, from day one of practice, you're the best. You don't even know what anybody else is doing, but you better work like you're the best. Seeing the vision, believing in the vision that you can get there, is half the battle, maybe more than half the battle. You know, setting the goal, yes I can do it, believing in the, in the goal, and then working towards it. It's one thing to have a dream, it's one thing to pretend, but it's another thing to work towards that. We focus a lot on looking down the road, not so much on wins and losses. Uh, but we look at finding where that next challenge is going to come from. I mean, we really can't pinpoint what obstacles are going to be put in front of you, but you need that vision and you need that drive in order to move forward. If you don't, if you don't have that instinct that you want to proceed ahead and want more, at whatever, whatever it is that you're working on, you're probably not going to work as hard. You're probably not going to find that extra gear that you need to get to where you want to go to. Visualization, you know, you see something enough times or you dream it enough times, it's in your mind, it's got to be in your heart, you know, and if you've got it in your heart and then you put it in your mind, you continue to flush yourself with just visualizing, this is what I want, this is how I want it to go, your body doesn't have a choice but to translate that. When you go against the opponent, most people, they've already lost by tip-off. because they, they don't expect to win, they're hoping they win, but we know. As we always knew as a team that we should win this one. If you have a dream, that that is potential. And if you put it to work, then it has every likelihood of becoming something tangible and something concrete as anyone else's dream. I always want to be a baseball player. And even, you know, kids used to make fun of me, you know, tell me that it wasn't possible, but that's always something I wanted to do. Seeing yourself as successful is the first step toward becoming successful. If you are not focused on where you want to be in your life, you will probably not get there. It's as simple as that. October 29th, 1974, we're playing the dreaded Dallas Cowboys on Monday, 1980. They've beaten us eight straight times. But we got a chance right now. Roman Gabriel is our quarterback. We finally have some people in place. And we're getting ready to go out and we're going to play them at Veterans Stadium. Right before the game starts, about an hour before the game starts, I get a whistle from Dick LeBeau, our special teams coach. Riley, get the kickoff team in the meeting room. I, got, I, I thought something happened. You know, something happened to somebody's parents. I get the kickoff team, we go into the meeting room. Dick closes the door. He's now the defensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Played in the league for 12 to 14 years, I forget which. And he's rocking back and forth. The smile comes over his face and he said, you're not going to believe this, guys. They're going to introduce the special teams tonight to get the 700 level and the crowd in the game. See, we needed that 12th man to help us. And so here I am standing in the, in the, in the tunnel. I'm the captain of the special teams. And I'm the 11th man to be introduced. And I gotta tell you something. This is what I was dreaming about in my backyard. This is what I was pretending to be. And I had to check to see if my name was really on the back of that jersey. Because I was having an out of body experience. And as each one of my teammates went out on the field, the crowd got louder and louder. The Philadelphia fans got it. They knew what was happening. It was the lunch pail crew. It was the suicide squad. It was the guys that they associated with that were being introduced. And I had chills. And as I got introduced, a little mustard was put on my introduction by a guy by the name of Dan Baker who said, and now from Villanova University and Wilmington, Delaware, captain of the special teams, our own Kevin Riley. And I floated across that astroturf the 10 guys that were jumping up and down. For the next five to 10 minutes, I felt like a rock star. Here I was, 25 years old, 235 pounds. I had a 400 pound bench press, and I'm out playing 
in front of a crowd that I've been dreaming of playing since watching them in Franklin Field at 10 years old. It doesn't get any better than this. And then we beat the Dallas Cowboys on a last second 43-yard field goal by Tom Dempsey to win the game. For me, visualizing not only what I wanted to do, but the feelings that I wanted to have when I came out of it, and you know, like pride, satisfaction, success, they manifested themselves into the action because I focused on those feelings rather than maybe some of the other feelings that potentially occur. So if you're focusing on the positive elements and what you want to happen, then you're, you don't have time to worry about what's going to go wrong. And it makes it that much easier for everything to go the way you want. There was a time when you sat in the doctor's office without an iPhone where you actually did some thinking, where you read a, you read a magazine. There was some time waiting in line or waiting in... We are now constantly on something that is taking advantage of our visuals or our audio and we're not being creative. And I think that's going to hurt us as Americans going forward. The first thing that we work on, I mean, in the middle of the winter, is your mental state of mind. You know, a lot of, a lot of athletic events, whatever sport they are, they're one as you get off the bus. If I was going to visualize and I was going to meditate, I wanted to get myself to a point where I was so focused on what I wanted to think about that I wasn't just visualizing it, but I could, you know, feel it. I could smell the grass. I could feel the wind, you know. Every aspect, my muscles were, you know, feeling like I was warming up as I visualized myself warming up for a game. When we won, you know, it just was all of the manifestations of the visualization that you've grown up doing. You know, you imagine yourself playing a game, making the finals, you know, and then like holding that golden medal in your hand. I felt like I won the Olympics. Remember, as a human being, your vibrational purpose is to create the life that you have imagined. One of the examples I use is if, if, if you have a dark room and you walk into it, you, you, you don't get rid of the darkness. You turn on the light switch and the darkness goes. So in other words, don't focus on the darkness. Focus on the light, where you're going, and those other things will take care of themselves. Because the thing you got to remember here is that life itself is meaningless. The only meaning life has is the one that you give it. And if you can focus on that, not where you're at, but where you're going, the fear will start to dissipate just like the darkness in the dark room. That's how human energy flows. If you are not focused on where you want to be in your life, you will probably not get there. As I go, the ends does not justify the means. The means is the journey that you're on in life to begin with. And if you want to play Major League Baseball, well, then you start right where you're at and you enjoy where you're at. That's the first step. And if you feel like you're incomplete because you're not in Major League Baseball or you're trying so hard and I'm willing this to happen and you're, you're going the wrong way. You, you have confidence in yourself. I love playing this game. I'm going to be the best I can because I want that. You'll draw people to you. You won't have to try to prove yourself to someone. It's as simple as that. Having a vision will serve as a guide for you to define your passion one step at a time.